Hello, I'm uh, Dr. Bill Wyatt, and I'm a general dentist, but I've practiced orthodontics for about a little over 40 years of my practice, and I've learned uh, a lot of little things that I'm trying to pass on to other people, uh, other dentists primarily, and uh, I'm a member of the American Orthodontic Society, and I'm board certified in that. And this is an organization that's dedicated to educating the general, the pediatric dentist, and really any other dentist that's interested in learning about orthodontics. And we have a wonderful organization, and we have a group of real well-trained instructors. And it and we have a good uh, system. We go through boards and all the other things. We have a good journal. So I encourage you to, if you're a dentist and are interested in studying orthodontics or adding that to your practice, that you join the American Orthodontic Society. Anyway, that's uh, that's it's a good thing. Now I'm going to talk some about uh, lower cuspids and for many years it was considered that you could not expand lower cuspids and get them to stay out and there was a lot of good research done and they just came to the conclusion if you expanded lower cuspids they would always go back within 10 years regardless of whether you extracted teeth or didn't extract teeth or However, you did it. Now, this was uh, Dr. Little from Washington that did a lot of this research, and it, he's a fine gentleman. And I have heard him speak, and he's a real nice guy. And I don't know where they made the mistake in there, but I just could not believe that you couldn't expand the lower cuspids, that they didn't have any sacred position they would go back to. But what I think they did, they just spread the crowns out and didn't bring the roots back and they would go back. So I started earlier taking the roots back actually further than you do the crown. So the tooth is already leaning or has some tip to it. So I found a case here that is about the most crowded lower anteriors and I've ever seen, and I decided to do a test on that, and this was back in 1973, I believe, so uh, I'll show this young lady if we can get this thing working. Uh, now, this was back before we went to brackets, so you're going to have a, a awakening here. We're doing a banded case. <laughs> And for those of you who've never banded a orthodontic case, you're darn lucky, you know, that we've got got brackets that you can put on now. There's just so many good features about brackets. Now this young lady is a little protrusive and a little bit excess vertical of the face, not a not a whole lot, but it's not extremely protrusive either. And this was nineteen seventy three. I don't think we started over until 74, so later in 74. But you see how toothy she looks. Now these pictures were taken quite a few years ago, so they're not the best in the world. Now this is her model. She has a deep bite, I mean extremely deep bite. And I'm going to use a little marking pen. Uh, these upper anteriors that come down over, and you could hardly see the lower anterior teeth in here. So, this was a problem too on the case. And when we look at the side view, you get a good class one relation in here, and the deep bite, and you can hardly see the lower anterior teeth. Now, we'll go to the other side of the mouth. And it too is almost ideal class one 
got the six keys and all the goody things in here, but you got this deep bite. And uh, so when you have a class one situation, especially on both sides of the mouth, and you've got a deep bite, you have to have a real crowded bunch of lower anterior teeth down there to do that. Now if you've got a class two case, then you can have fairly straight lower anteriors and still have a deep bite with a class two uh, situation, but not a class one. So I'll show you the upper is not excessively crowded. Uh, we've got some crowding in this rotation of this tooth and that cuspid in this one will be rotated so this needs to be brought out and uh, there's a lot of problems here now. So as we go through this case now this is the lower anterity and I don't think I can recall seeing anybody that's any more crowded down here on the lower anterior. Here's a, a I guess that's a lateral, another lateral over here, the central and the central. And the space they've got to go in is about that big, you know. Well, it's silly. You can't possibly stick those teeth in there, at least you would think. Not without a lot of expansion. Back in here. Now she was toothy, so we decided to take out the first guy cut it. And you remember in the 70s, extracting teeth was the way to go. Um, and nearly all orthodontists extracted teeth over many of their cases. This excessively uh, practiced that extraction technique. So that pendulum changed and went back in the other direction. And some people don't extract any teeth, but that's not right either. So you do need to take some teeth out on some people, but not near as many as we did back in the 70s. So anyway, we plan to eliminate the first by cuts, but then we did here. And then we start to expand this out. Now we put bands on there, so we had to put separators in there and spread it out just to get the bands on. And uh, some of the teeth we didn't band right off, you know, we just put the ones on the sides and then open the space here. And you get this open goods where you can turn this tooth around, this cusp it around, and that's uh, just regular simple orthodontics. And we're going to expand the lower. In the meantime, we're putting some reverse curve in the wire. We're picking these teeth up and we're going down with the anterior teeth. But it's slow go that way. Later on, we came up with a, an intruding arch, which we can open the bites while you're thinking about it with anything else. But you need to change your band system. Uh, more bands to do that have an auxiliary tube. Okay. Now, <clears throat> to, we took up a lot of this room getting the bands on there, and now this cusp is almost flat sideways in there. Now this one needs some attention, and this one too it needs to be brought out. And this young lady is missing now the six year moors up above. So we elected not to take any teeth out above, but we took the bicuspids first back up is on the bottom arch. Now we <clears throat> started expanding here with a spring, just pushing this back and we've extracted these two my cuspids and we're pushing the cuspids back into that area. Now we'll have to bring their roots, make sure their roots go actually further back than the crowns go. And so we are in the process of expanding. And as we get more and more room in here, we'll bring this tooth through this gap. That's the lower left central, apparently. Now, I just wanted to 
do this case and show that you could expand lower cuspids and get it to stay. And so I'm going to show you some pictures of this case in 1993, and we started working with it in 1973, so it'll be 20 years that we worked on it. You got a little genuine information around here. This goes away after you get it straightened out a little bit. Uh, I'm going to run through these pretty fast. It's regular uh, orthodontics. We're not concerned about too much in this series, but I'm stressing the fact that you can widen the lower anterior teeth. And it was taught in many orthodontic uh, schools. Uh, they extracted an awful lot of lower anterior teeth because they couldn't, they thought you could not expand the lower cuspids and get them to stay there. And there are some orthodontists even today that think that. But that is not a fact. You can expand them, but you've got to bring the root structure back, and we'll show that too. All right, we're getting that pretty well going, and now we're expanding these two lower anteriors to bring that tooth forward. Now here's, <coughs> we're going to look at the young lady's face it's still a little bit on the full side and she's got too much vertical dimension on the face you see and watch this when we finish up we're going to be able to reduce the vertical height of the face something like about a half inch in here if you, if you look at it later on and when she smiles even though we've extracted teeth and we're going back she's still on the toothy side <clears throat> Excuse me. Now as we bring that lower left central through this gap, it's going to push a big lump of gingival tissue in front of it. Now you don't have to take your electro surge and trim that out. You just go ahead and push it out there and the stuff just migrates away. I didn't cut any of it off or take any off with an electro surge. And, and we didn't have lasers there, but I did have an electro surge. At least we got one somewhere back in there. Now as we bring it through, it'll just migrate away. Now we've opened up space for the cuspids, and we'll start rotating them. And as we come on forward with this, we'll have a big lump of tissue, but the tooth will need to be torqued. Now we can't do any torquing much in here until we get a rectangular wire. Also, we need a wire that's got some reverse curve in it. So we're intruding these teeth. We're bringing them down as we expand them. And these are bringing them up. And we didn't have to do much expansion on them. Now the lower uh, left central that's coming through there is going to have this big lump of tissue. It'll bring it through. We've opened up plenty of space. <clears throat> now on the bottom, I mean on the top, to rotate these cuspids. And so we've got plenty of room. Now this band will have to be re-cemented. Now we have to take it loose and get the bracket headed right in here. You'll have to do some rotation before you actually put the bracket on. That's just routine orthodontics, but we stress a little of that as we go through all of these cases and none of them just pure one thing so we've extracted teeth we've expanded the cuspids brought them back and we've got almost space enough but you're going to have to bring the roots of these teeth out to the side expand the roots too to be able to bring this tooth all the way up in here and bring the roots forward now we still haven't come too far with that now we're it's 10 of 74 and uh, we're coming along fairly good with the case i'm no real hurry to do it. it must not have been we're taking an awful long time to do some of the things back then that we can do now in a lot less time uh, okay so now the tooth is 
got room enough we kind of close this we'll need to tip this a little and then we'll rotate this central out and bring the root structure out on that and we like to bring the root of this one in some that's the lower left lateral right there all right we still haven't rotated this too looks like we have changed the band there and got the bracket more of the radial surface of the tooth okay now we've got the tooth through there but we need to torque this one out more than this out so you'll have some labial root torque built into the bracket i mean into the arch wire and this is a round wire so we can't do any of that with that round wire all right <clears throat> now i'm going to go through a few of the panorex x-rays on this case we've got apparently had a bad tooth here and we eliminated it and i think we uh either took one over here i'm not sure whether that's a wisdom tooth or not but we got a wisdom tooth up here to take the place of that and uh, so this was 1973 really before we got started on it so we've taken the six-year molars out and we're letting the wisdom teeth come down into these spaces and it's working pretty good now here we've taken the braces off the top on this panorex and uh, we'll go back and show clinically what we did before we got to this point but I wanted to stress one point here that you really need to know if you expand the cuspid you bring the root back now, if you had the root sitting over here and you pull the crown over there, then the crown would tend to come back to that point. Oh, goodness. Okay, maybe it's back to working, but what I want to stress you now, this is 1992. This is after, I'll go back to that x-ray. This is 20 years or so after we uh, started the case, uh, maybe 19 years. But look where the roots of the cuspids are. See, they're back both sides the cuspid is at an angle like that now there just isn't any sacred position for this cuspid that's going to make it stay there and the crown just go back over in this direction now if you had just brought the crown out here and the root was still back over here i could see that it would want to migrate back over the root and i think that's where they made a mistake in the research that uh, recommended extracting lower anterior teeth so anyway here is the lady after we finished her and you get another view this is not as pretty as the previous one and we've got a you know fairly flat facial profile but not that terribly flat but look at the vertical height of the face back when we were working with this young lady and you see the distance in here and we've reduced that down to about something like that so we 
reduce the vertical height of the face and there's the and that's almost ideal and we went from that to that now that makes a weight of a lot of difference in the beauty of this person or the attractiveness of this face if you added another half inch of, of length on it here this would not look near as pretty as it does like this at this height now much you you can look at this however you want to but it's just too much height in the lower third of the face it should be about the length of these areas here this and this and this should be about a half inch less than it is now now that's hard to accomplish in orthodontics but we took the teeth out and so you put the same facial I mean the same force on the teeth and you put it on fewer teeth and over a period of time you actually can lower the vertical height of the lower third of the face it's, it takes time and you reduce the amount of teeth that are keeping it apart and you get somebody who's breathing right and swallowing right and doing all the good things like that and you can reduce the vertical height of the face which is no simple thing to do in orthodontics so here she is later on in 1992 that's just another view of it now here we go back to the clinical stuff and try to finish that up now, as we bring this tooth out and put a rectangular wire and start torquing it this big lump of tissue just seems to migrate away you don't have to go in and cut it off you know just kind of push it out there and then it just kind of migrates away it's an interesting thing i've noticed that over the years and we're rotating the upper cuspids and trying to get them out and we'll go ahead and finish this case up now we've almost got this torqued enough so you need if you look at that piece of wire right there you can see we have this little steel comes up but we have torque in that to bring this root out and that root will come out if you just put the torque in the arch wire good enough so as we continue to work with that and torque it out and uh, that's closer but it's still got some torquing to do right in there then you will torque the other one in some but now the tooth is torqued all the way out there it's 1976 so we've taken a long time doing this case now we were closing the upper real tight this was a wire we used to use you don't need that you use that nowadays all right we're just about finished with that now the routine orthodontic stuff i won't spend much time but the, the fact that we expanded the lower cuspids almost twice the distance that they were when we started and it stayed and it is stable that way so if you've been taught that you cannot expand the lower cuspids this is not correct and I've made it a point during my 40 some odd years of orthodontics to, if it didn't make sense then I did not believe it I don't know how some people did their research but there are several things that are just not right and this is one of them and I hope to pass this on to as many people as I can and I don't have much longer to pass it on but I've enjoyed my career in orthodontics and I feel like I've helped a lot of people in there and made it very gratifying profession uh, now this is leveled out and those teeth are torqued pretty good right there now and here we are in 77 
And so we were finishing this thing up. Now this slide was, now these were taken with just regular pictures, you see, and I had to digitize them later on. So uh, I got something on these and I couldn't erase it. Uh, so here we are in 1985. She's in retainers. I put a lower three to three on her for a while. Then we just took all of that off. And so that's 1985. There's the upper retainer. And the bottom is staying. And this is not the only case. I'm going to show several more. But uh, this one we'll just... This will be the first phase of expansion of rural cuspids, you know. But here it is in 79, in 77, 77. And I was watching her very close because I was going to see in 10 years it's supposed to go back. Well, 10 years it didn't go back. And I kept watching it. And here it is in 1993, and it's still there. And I've lost contact with this young lady. But I would bet you anything, if you could find her somewhere, that those cuspids have not drifted back over. You see, they're sitting at an angle. And they have no sacred information that's being sent to them and tell them they've got to get back over here. And they would have to come all the way back here to be as close as they were when, when we started. And that just isn't going to happen. And so I'm teaching people that you definitely can expand the lower anteriors if you put the roots in the proper positions and it is stable. So I'm going to stand on that. It's just as stable as anything else for orthodontics. Now if you change the pressure on the teeth, they'll move some way or another where the pressure is equal on both sides. But there. There's the models, and there it is 20 years after we started the case, if we started in 93, and here it is, I mean in 73. So this is the crowded position of those cuspids in 1973, and here they are in 1993. And so they have stayed, and I would tell you that you, these teeth will not migrate back over there. They'd have to have some terrible something happen here for them to do that. So anyway, here's the facial height we started. There's what it, the vertical after about the time we were working on her some. And here's what she looked like later. And so we accomplished two things. We reduced the fullness of the profile and we also reduced the vertical height of the lower third of the face. And I think this is a successful case. So I'm going to stop at this point and we'll consider this the first phase and we'll come in with a second phase of uh, orthodontics to do that. I can stop this now. I don't know what I'm going to have to do. It's still going on. I think I have to get out of the...